So our next learning objective is to explain the purpose of and prepare an adjusted trial balance. So what we're looking at here is the worksheet, which is an Excel spreadsheet that the accountant creates at the end of the accounting period to help organize the adjustments. So notice on the far left, we have a set of columns called the unadjusted trial balance. So those are the balances of the accounts before the adjustments. And because a company usually has many adjustments like this company, instead of just entering them into the journal directly, the accountant will almost always enter and calculate the adjustments here on these two adjustment columns, which we will get practice doing. And then after they've entered all the adjustments, the adjusted trial balance is the balances of the accounts after the adjustments. So the adjusted trial balance simply shows all of the account balances after the adjusting entries have been made at the end of the accounting period. It's used to do multiple things. It confirms that the debits equal the credits after the adjusting entries. In this case, the debits are 128,050 and so are the total credits. It ensures that the balance sheet items are properly valued. It ensures that the income statement account balances are updated correctly. And then the whole worksheet is used to prepare the financial statements. And as I mentioned, the adjusted trial balance often appears on this spreadsheet called the worksheet. The worksheet is a tool that the accountant uses to help do the adjusting entries at the end of the accounting period. We'll learn how to do the whole worksheet in Chapter 4. But in this chapter, Chapter 3, we'll be working on the unadjusted trial balance columns, the adjustments columns, and the adjusted trial balance columns. On this slide, we're seeing the whole worksheet. Notice the income statement and balance sheet columns are empty. We'll figure out how to fill out those in chapter four. So again, we're just going to concentrate on this chapter on the unadjusted trial balance columns, the adjustments columns, and the adjusted trial balance columns. So let's look at another one a little closer up so it's easier to see. On all worksheets, the first set of columns is called the trial balance. So all these numbers are, are just the balances of each account from the ledger. And the ledger could be the official four column ledger or when you're learning accounting, often they come from T accounts. But just realize that these are the uh, account balances before the adjustments. And then in the adjustments columns, before the accountant enters these adjustments into the journal, the accountant uses this worksheet, which is basically a spreadsheet, to help summarize the adjustments and to calculate them. So let's see if we can figure out what's going on in adjustment A. So in adjustment A, it looks like they're debiting supplies expense. So that means since, since they're debiting expense, that means supplies expense is increasing. And then the credit is supplies going down with a credit. So what type of adjustment would increase supplies expense and lower supplies? Well, that's the adjustment to show how much supplies were used during the period. Now let's look at adjustment B. It's depreciation expense increasing by 1,000, and then accumulated depreciation on the equipment increasing by 1,000, because that's a contra asset account. So in adjustment B, all they're doing is just recording the depreciation on the equipment. And then in adjustment C, it looks like they're increasing interest expense by $100, and they're also in and they're also increasing interest payable by $100. So it looks like at the end of the year, in this case, they figured out that they owe interest of $100. They're not paying it now. 
So it's a payable. So the increase of payable and the increase of interest expense. So this company only has three adjusting entries. And then when they're done entering the adjusting entries here in the adjustments columns, they add up the debits and credits to make sure that they equal. And once they are entered here, then they can be entered into the journal. And once the adjustment columns are done, we now update the balances of each account in the adjusted trial balance columns. So notice cash before was 5,400 and there was no adjustment, so it's still 5,400. Supplies had a $700 debit and then we had an adjustment of $500 credit. So a credit to an asset account means it's going down. So we take 700 minus 500 gives us 200. The equipment was not adjusted. The accumulated depreciation was 1,000 and then it increased 1,000 more. So the new balance is 2,000. Accounts payable was not adjusted. So it's the same balance. Interest payable was zero. It increased by 100, so the new balance is 100. Notes payable and capital and withdrawals were not adjusted. Neither was service revenue, neither was rent expense. So then we get down to supplies expense. It was zero. We increased the expense with a $500 debit, so the new balance is 500. Then we had zero depreciation expense. We increased it by 1,000, so the new balance is 1,000. And then we had $100 of interest expense before on the trial balance. We increased it by 100 more, so the new balance is 200. And then we add up our debits and our credits, and they both equal 28,300. So now what some students do to calculate the 20,300 is they think that they can take the 27,200, add 1,600, and then they find out that no, that does not equal 28,300. So this is a common question by students. Why can't we just take the 27,200, add the 1,600 to get the 28,300? Because not all of these debits and credits in the adjustments column are increasing the account. For example, look at supplies. There's a $500 credit. Was that adding to the supplies account? No, the supplies account had a $700 debit. And then we credited the account, which means it's going down. And why did we credit it? Because that's the amount of office supplies we use. So the $500 credit is lowering the amount of supplies. So the moral of the story is when you're calculating your adjusted trial balance, total debits and credits, just add up the debits and then just add up the credits.